Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very accomplished professional from Mumbai, India, Suman Kher. Suman, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Suman is the Chief Executive Officer of Soft Skills Studio. So Suman, before we talk about soft skills and communication, tell me a little bit about your own journey. It's a journey for sure, because I've been doing this for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. And it started with a chance job at a CAT coaching institute, moved mm -hmm. on to coaching call center aspirants. Then I became a corporate trainer. And when the social media train really took off in 2014, I realized, hey, you need to be out there. And that's when I started Soft Skills mm -hmm. Studio. Then I be became an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been quite a journey but one common thing that's always been there is communication mm -hmm. and that is something that i'm still passionate about whether it is for students for women entrepreneurs corporates i think that one thing has been really common even though maybe the platforms and the modes have changed from mm -hmm. offline to online so that's how it's been so far if you want i can talk about my no, credentials but no 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 credentials but let's talk about <laughs> that's all soft right, skills sure. which is what you do now so tell me, how do you define soft skills and how do these differ from if there is a term called hard skills? Absolutely, there is a term called hard skills. So hard skills is what people teach you in college. For mm -hmm. instance, all the technical information that you have. Okay. Soft skills are soft because you are going to mold it based on the situation you're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, research shows that soft skills are increasingly becoming more and more important as we work in mm -hmm. diverse, uh, changing work environments. There are multiple generations working at the same time. So the mm -hmm. soft skill of communicating with different kinds of people, using your emotional intelligence to figure out whether you should be um, technical with someone, should you be assertive with someone, should you use questions, all right? So it's all about soft skills and being able to gauge a situation and using the communication skills that you have mm. accordingly. And that's mm. what makes it like, it's soft, it's flexible. It well depends said. on who you're talking to. Well said. And uh, what are some of the common soft skills that employers look for when uh, you know they're looking for candidates? And give me an example also. Yeah, so research still shows it is communication, which is at the top, because mm -hmm. uh, even when you're applying for a job, starting from your cover letter, which goes first, and mm -hmm. then probably you get invited to the interview, mm -hmm. okay? Communication skills are still right at, at the top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, to give a quick example, personal branding, even for employees, has become a pretty big deal now, because right. if you are online, then you right. reflect the company that you work for. So the way you write, the way you communicate, mm. the way you interact with people who've commented on your post, okay? And I'm, I'm using this as an online example because that is something that everybody relates to. Everybody is on some platform or the other, mm. right? So their communication becomes so much important. You can't say I am X in my job, but I can be whatever I want to online, but it's mm. there for everybody to see. So communication right. is absolutely important. If I look at another example of actual work situation, mm -hmm. I tend to get a lot of, um, uh, you know, messages about how they've taken in these youngsters who are from great universities and colleges. Mm -hmm. However, now we need to mold them. Correct. Towards professional standards of communication, talking to a client, small mm -hmm. talk, being polite. Uh, and also writing emails, you're writing to a CEO, okay, so it's important for you to be able to, uh, again, you're representing your organization there, it's not just mm -hmm. about, hey, I'm just going to write two lines, like I chat on WhatsApp or whatever, mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot at stake, and to me, communication is important, because that's what I have been doing, and that's what I deal with day yep. in and day out, I think communication is number one, mm -hmm. tech savvy, of course, is another thing that mm -hmm. is required, because there are a lot of these tools, and a lot of work from home, so you need to navigate a lot of these tech tools, which again, probably boils down to different modes of communication how are you on slack on zoom on emails mm -hmm. uh, now we're stepping out and you know meeting clients so i think 
that is another skill that is mm. important mm. a third yeah. one would be change management i'm mm. just going to quickly finish yeah. with three third one no, would please. be change management mm. because i think we've lived through some unprecedented change mm -hmm. uh through the pandemic and it, there's so many aspects of life which i feel have completely transformed from the way we learn we consume content the way we socialize uh the way we entertain ourselves you know maybe going out for a movie was a default before but now mm. it's like you know what the new release is right here on netflix let's just order food in and mm. right so which is why even in work situations things have really changed i had to like change my entire business model in 2020 because everything was shut yeah. okay so i think the ability to cope with change is another very important soft skill that companies mm. would be looking for fascinating great response thank you my next question to you, uh, Suman, is uh, how can managers and leaders improve their soft skills to better lead and manage their own teams? I think the headline for this answer would be upskilling. Mm -hmm. Beyond a point, people feel, oh, I've been at it for so long, I really know how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I had so many years of experience. It's not like I don't know how things work. But in my experience, I feel the higher we move in our careers, hmm. the more sophistication and polish that is required. Right. So as a team member, if I'm responsible only for my job and my communication, as a leader, I'm responsible for not just my teams, mm -hmm. but also I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bridge between my team and the seniors, the CEOs, hmm. the stakeholders, hmm. right? So it becomes all the more important. So to me, upskilling kind of sums up the whole thing. Mm. Don't look at investing in skills as an expense, mm -hmm. but it's an investment. Mm. Uh, maybe every few months or every year or so now, things are changing so rapidly. So it's a mm. good idea to go ahead and gauge. Mm. Uh, am I getting stuck somewhere? Is there something that I can do better? Go out there, find someone who mm. can help you with that invest in in coaching and make sure that you upskill yourself mm -hmm. in the senior leadership level there are a lot of skills that become important for instance negotiation skills navigating you know talking to stakeholders talking right. to your team making sure they're all on the same page if they're not why are they not on the same page mm -hmm. right assertive skills executive presence especially for women because mm -hmm. We really need to work out to be taken seriously at the okay. higher levels, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why that percentage of, of women in the higher categories, cadres, is so low. Mm -hmm. So these skills are something that we are not taught at the college level. We are not taught on our jobs. But if we're serious about our careers, I think we have to invest in them ourselves. Because the more executive presence and communication skills that I have, the more my team is going to respect me, listen to me. Uh, look up to me and I am going to be able to command that respect from seniors, stakeholders and my juniors. Mm. So I think upskilling is really the, really the well key. Said. The times are gone where, oh, you know, I'm an MBA and I have 20 years of experience and then I'm all good. I sign up for courses from time to time. I work with coaches and see, you know, whether it is in my communication or my business, um, my online branding. Is there something new that I can learn? Absolutely. You know, I, I, so that I'm not missing out on anything. You're so, you're I think so right. Is very important. You're so right. Learning doesn't stop for anyone at any age. Yes. yes. But my next question, Suman, is that you know culturally we are a very very diverse country. Yes. And I've heard this so many times from people that let my work do my talking, and I've said that your work will do the talking, but you have to talk about yourself. Culturally, I have noticed that people from our country don't talk too much about the work they are doing. My question is, how do cultural uh, differences impact the development and use of soft skills? So I think simply put, if you look at the Western and Eastern cultures, yeah. uh, it comes from there in my knowledge. So in the Western culture, right from childhood, there's a lot of emphasis on individuality. Parents right. will ask you, what do you want? Are you okay with this? Mm -hmm. Whereas it is just the opposite in the Eastern cultures. And it's not just India. It's also in China, Japan, the most of Southeast Asia, okay? Mm -hmm. Where um, we all are aware that parents are the big thing. You know, we have this book called The Tiger Mom. Mm -hmm. So it's a big thing where we are told to not talk about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's very bragging and be humble or just do your work, stay mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised to know that 
that happens more with women mm -hmm. and that is not uh, related to culture. It's literally mm -hmm. culture agnostic because I follow a lot of people even abroad and I find that common strand running through all women's conditioning mm -hmm. saying as a woman, don't be too loud, don't speak up. Okay. Uh, what, what are people going to think? If you speak up, you're just bossy. If you're assertive, you're just being a maybe a B word, right? Mm -hmm. And men don't want to take that. So Culturally, it's very important to overcome that conditioning, which we mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. uh, as a culture, you know, the, the Eastern culture that we are. Okay, right. uh, and like I said, however, it's really interesting to note that that conditioning is there everywhere. So there's this author called Peggy Kloss who mm -hmm. runs workshops in the U.S. Spe mm -hmm. specifically for women, because like I said, this conditioning of not speaking about our work uh, for women especially, is like international, right? So mm. she runs batches for women where she empowers them, teaches them to overcome that conditioning and say, as women, mm. we need to speak up more, if not equal to men, to make mm. sure that we get noticed, our work is noticed, mm. okay? But then when we talk about work culture as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, even in terms of branding, I think your work will speak for yourself, mm is a very outdated concept and right. i think the very existence of linkedin is uh based on us going out there and talking about our work because mm. if that wasn't important mm. then what would linkedin be there for you know we wouldn't be talking about social stuff right so right. we have to go out there more than ever to talk about it there are cultural differences However, this is something that is very, very important. And I think maybe the first thing that everybody should learn to do is find ways to talk about your work, not in a, in a braggy way, but get humble and say, yes, I have done these many things. Mm, well and said. that would really over, help overcome cultural barriers. Well said, completely agree. And what, in your opinion, are some of the common mistakes a lot of people make when trying to improve their soft skits? I mean, of course, they must come and you know, sign up with someone. But other than that, what are the mistakes they make? I think it also depends on what level they are in. However, mm -hmm. I think uh, at the basic level, there are a lot of these simple things that people miss out on. Mm -hmm. Starting with even writing a polite two-line emails. Mm -hmm. I also find that people are very uncomfortable with the small talk space. I work with a lot of tech people, a lot of senior managers. And when we do the role plays, they're going to straight away jump into their presentation. And I'll be like, you know what? There are people listening to you. Why don't you just say, hi, hello, how was your weekend? If it is a midweek, you say, yeah, you know, we made it to the midweek and has it been going well for all mm. you guys, okay? So for some reason, we feel professional communication is supposed to be all about work we need to be stiff and professional and just get to the point mm. we're missing that human connect and it's become all the more important now when we're working uh on camera or we are hybrid some are in the office some are sitting in their home some have their videos off mm. so all the more important to get that personal connect and pull okay. people out of the whole work frame yeah. and even the work frame, there could be people sitting next to them, family members doing something. So just the connect gets people to feel, okay, I'm at work mm. and people care about my life. My manager does want to talk about uh, stuff other than work. So I mm. think writing emails politely, uh, asking about people, personal contact, that's another thing. Mm. The third thing, like I said, even earlier is how people feel they don't realize they don't realize that probably they need to work on their soft skills. Mm -hmm. It's a template that they follow and they just follow. My boss mm -hmm. conducts meeting like this, so I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing there would be to realize what is your style of communication? Mm -hmm. What are the kind of soft skills that you want to build for yourself so that when you come into a meeting, right? People feel like, okay, I want to listen to this person. Okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be fun sitting in this meeting because we get two minutes to talk about our life as well. We mm. have that human connect like we would in an office. Okay. So I think these are like the top three things that very interesting. people could pay attention very, to. Very, very. Thank you. Uh, and how important is empathy when you talk about uh, developing strong uh, soft skills? I think 
making that personal connect is really a part of empathy. And mm -hmm. when I do this piece with people, I actually open this up and say, you know why it's important to talk to people before mm -hmm. you jump into work is because everybody's working from home. Someone's kid might be unwell and they might not have had a full night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Somebody must have had other challenges. Maybe mm -hmm. there are old people at home, health issues. Because we are not meeting every day, we don't know what's happening in people's personal lives. And in those 20 minutes, you straight away jump into your meeting, you say, blah, 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 these are the things that you need to do, delegate, mm. jump out. Mm. Okay, that is absolute lack of empathy. While we are working from home, I think that's become so critical mm. to ask about people. Uh, get them to even share personal stuff and say, guys, these are five minutes where we're going to not talk about work. Uh, tell us what's happening in your life. Mm. And I've also seen some senior managers come back and tell me that we have started a separate slot where my team and I will get together for 30 minutes in a, in a month or so. And it's no work conversations. Mm -hmm. Just maybe share your, your frustrations or wins or anything that you're finding challenging at work. Mm -hmm. I think that shows so much of empathy and every leader today should be aware of the fact that people are working in very non-standard conditions. They're mm -hmm. working at home, somebody's in their hometown, maybe the network is not working. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were stuck alone working during the pandemic because they lived alone, but going mm -hmm. to office was their only way to socialize, Correct. right? So that empathy would help really a lot where put the personal connect first mm. and then work will anyways get done. So make sure that you know what people are up to in your team. Make time for something like that. Mm, I think sense. their empathy would really, really help. Great response. Thank you. My next question, Seema, is now on communication. Next few questions, so because communication, you said, is the most important soft skill. What is the most important aspect of effective communication? If you say one, I would say voice, mm -hmm. voice modulation, because if the content is super interesting and you're telling such a great story, mm -hmm. but if your delivery is flat, you just go in one monotone, okay? It's not really doing anything for mm -hmm. the audience. You're just droning mm -hmm. on and on and on and on. That's it. So to me, one central aspect would be voice modulation. Mm -hmm. Voice modulation also leads to helping people understand what's important. Correct. What the structure is. Mm -hmm. So if your voice kind of declares that this is a story and say, yesterday I was going on the street and I went to this coffee shop and this is what happened. Mm -hmm. So that declaration of it's a story Right? Or mm. it could be a question. Did you know that 80% of the startups do not survive within a year? Mm. Can you guess what the reason is? I think the impact of these two examples lie in the voice, the way I modulate my voice and Correct. kind of I'm able to um, convey here mm. is what it is. And mm. voice, again, this is something that I really do with all, with all my clients that if you're sitting at home and people's videos are off, they're sitting in there on this thing, the voice is the most powerful tool that we have to bring them back mm -hmm. by asking questions, taking it up, bringing Correct. it down, giving a pause, mm -hmm. okay? And like, stop your voice, even that is fine, all right? So I think to me, voice is like the central thing of being an effective communicator. Mm -hmm. Well said. And you know, when I was reading about you, there is also a mention about non-verbal communication skills. How does this work and how do you help uh, your clients? Nonverbal is not spoken about a lot, but if we think about it, nonverbal is uh, built into the way we communicate. Mm. Silence sometimes speaks louder. Mm. Uh, my facial expression, my Correct. hand gestures, the way I'm sitting, mm. okay? A whole lot of things speak even though I am not speaking. Mm -hmm. And I know I keep coming back to, to online modes, but that is how people are working a lot in today's times, right. right? A whole lot of work is still on Zoom. And which is why I tell them that in this box, unfortunately, our non-verbal cues have become very limited. Mm -hmm. Earlier, we could turn left, we could turn right, we could move around, take a step, okay? Mm -hmm. I had this whole body of mind to project that non-verbal energy, right. which is sort of not there now. We just mm -hmm. have these boxes. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, voice always comes number one for me because even if people's videos are off and probably they're not looking at the screen, it's your voice that kind of 
keeps them right. there and pulls them back from distractions. Mm. The second most important thing is non-verbal communication. And I feel even if people are not on screen, it makes a difference if your hands are moving and you say we're going from point A to point B. Mm. And this is something that I that I tell my clients and I say, try this. You know, when you say here's the first thing and here's the second thing, while your hand moves, that is a tip for your voice to move along with your hands and, and tell you to slow down. So that's like an internal mechanism which reminds you. Mm. Okay. Uh, in fact, in 2015, Amy Cuddy wrote a book called Presence, mm. and that is completely centered around a concept called PAPOS, that is so far the latest research on, on body language. Mm -hmm. And she and there's research, it's a fantastic read, where she traces the entire research of how mm. our uh, mind-body connect is now changed to body-mind connect, when mm. we believe that what we think is what gets projected in our body language. But mm. through her research and experiments, she proved that we can use our body mm. to make our mind think the way we want to. So purpose when we do that, mm. my body uh, gives signal to my brain that I'm in control. And her experiments show that two minutes into a purpose mm. is just enough to literally change the physiology in your body, which wow. is the testosterone come, goes up and the cortisol comes down. Mm -hmm. They were even follow-up experiments where they said, okay, is this person really feeling assertive? And they had a follow-up, mm -hmm. okay, where somebody was supposed to disturb the experimenter to see how long do people take after the purpose. And after the purpose, people take considerably much shorter time to assert themselves, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm, I'm just sharing this because that's how important non-verbal communication mm -hmm. could be. If I'm sitting hunched because nobody can see me, it's now scientifically proven thanks to it. So let me ask you the next question. Um, how important is the role of active listening in communication? Again, very underrated concept mm. and made harder by Zoom because the phone is always there and we can always do that. Mm. So as we move up to the higher levels in our organization, mm. listening becomes very important mm. because listening is not just words. It's the tone, uh, specific words that were used. What was the body language? So active listening is also listening to the nonverbal cues mm. to see how is the person sitting? What was the facial expression? Did they say yes, but mm. maybe their body language said no. Mm. So which is why in investing on active listening, maybe do like a short course. It's not a big concept, but it's an important concept. Mm. Some of the tips that I tell people is, Put your phone away if mm. someone's come to you with a problem or if mm. it's an important meeting. Essentially, mm. put your phone away because yeah. it's such a reflex to reach for it the moment we have like a distraction for sure. a second, right? Sure. Secondly, have a paper and a pen. Maybe mm. you just note a word or two. If there's a question, you just write yeah. down a word and say, okay, here's a follow-up question. So that way you're taking yourself out of the process of listening for responding but mm. listening for the sake of listening. Mm. And that also helps us not jump in mm. because I'm busy making notes. I'm not mm. in a hurry. And once we listen patiently, we look at the notes and we say, okay, I have a couple of follow-up questions here. Right. So I think that just facilitates smoother communication without interrupting and jumping in and like, okay, no, I want to answer right now. Mm. So that is also a skill that needs to be developed. I think okay. using a paper and pen really does wonders. Absolutely. I know I'm a great believer in paper and pen myself, but so when we've run out of time now, so I really want to say thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey. Thank you for talking to me about soft skills and so many different aspects of soft skills. Thank you also for talking to me about so many different uh, forms of communication and how important communication is in developing uh, our soft skills. Thank you My for speaking pleasure, to me and good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.